Namaste, good morning. Thank you so much for joining this for eight minute practice. So please, as always, practice in accordance with your conditions and your abilities, um, but your limitations. And always remember that um, the practice is an offering. Imagine all patients experiencing this through you. In that sense, you want to give the best, best experience possible, not go to a place that is uncomfortable, that is um, painful, or um, that means a state of anxiety, or stress, or suffering. This is not what you want to transmit to others after all. So on that note, let's begin. Sit tall and straight, close the eyes. Bring the attention within. At the moment of creation, God became part of all living beings. Attune your mind to the supreme divine consciousness that is within and all around. Begin with the sound of home three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you are everywhere. Fix your mind on God alone. Ooh. Rest your thoughts in God alone. You will live hereafter. Of this there is no doubt. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice of our senses. May we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Only have for peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace. We make this practice even more meaningful, more powerful, and even better than meditation. Renounce all the fruits. Imagine this as your divine obligation to all beings everywhere. Do it simply because it must be done. So to start off with the Om Namah Shivaya Mantra, which means I bow to inner light. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Now let's do spiritual breathing in order to connect with the, uh, to a deeper level with the divine within. Bring the arms up, the palms slightly turned up. From the fingertips, inhale down through the arms into the spiritual heart. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold all the attention and the breath of the heart. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale out through the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale down through the arms, bringing the best, the best. Four, five. Six, seven, eight. Hold them again in the heart. Hold the breath there. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale again. Just the breath out through the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time. Inhale everything you need down into the spiritual heart. You use your attention to attract it there. Four, five, six. Seven, eight. Hold it all in the heart as an offering to God who resides there in your spiritual heart. 
Exhale, up through the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring the arms down now. Mantra for purification. To purify the space, the grass, and all the psychic channels within. If you don't know it, just move your lips. Pretend you're chanting through the voice of the guru. You drive all the benefits so you're chanting it. If you do know it, do it with conviction and volume so it can be heard by all the subtle bodies within and all around. Try doing a single breath three times. Om Mapavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yahas Maripanti Taksham Savaya Bihantra Ha Sachi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yahas Maripanti Taksham Savaya Bihantra Ha Sachi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Topi Wa Yaha Smadi Pandi Kaksham Sabaya Bihantra Ha Sachi So now we'll do alternate nostril breathing. This helps to um, balance up the energies. It helps to bring the mind into a state of calmness free of cravings, free of restlessness. And when the mind is free of restlessness and free of cravings, it is more conducive to concentration. And when you can concentrate uninterrupted, that becomes meditation. And through the meditation, we try to merge with the divine, merge with what, merge with the object of our meditation, which ultimately is God, because God is everywhere and is in all beings. So for this technique, we are breathing in through the left, close both nostrils just momentarily, exhale through the right, inhale back through the right, close both nostrils again, exhale through the left. We'll do about eight counts on the inhale and the exhale. And again, just close the nose completely before you exhale. Left hand in Yana Mudra, this Mudra consciousness always stays locked on the left knee or somewhere along the left leg near the hip or closer to the knee. And then the Spine is nice and tall so that you can allow the breath to move easily through the body. For the, for the, while you're doing this, we'll do a friction technique. That's to say, when we're breathing down, when we're breathing in, we're branching the breath moving down. It's like following the movement of the diaphragm down towards root of the spine on the exhale. The breath moves back up, so the breath, the diaphragm also lifts when you breathe out. So inhale down. Exhale back up. Just keep watching the movement of the breath. This keep, keep, helps keep your mind focused. And you try to make your mind one pointed on the breath, the movement of the breath. So let's begin. Sit up tall and straight. Empty the lungs. Begin on the next exhale. Close the right nostril with the right thumb. Inhale down through the left. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the left side with the right thumb. Exhale to the right. Three, four, watch the breath moving back up. Six, seven, eight, down to the right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, close right. Then open left, exhale back up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down to the left. Inflate the lungs, raise the chest. Five, six, seven, eight. Close the left, open the right, exhale, deflate. Three, four, the chest and the belly. Six, seven, eight. Inhale to the right. I think I messed up. So it inhale to the let's begin the story again. <laughs> Breathe out. I lost track. Close off the right side. Inhale to the left. Down. Two. Three. Close left, open back up, right. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down to the right. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the right, open left, exhale back up. Three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down to the left. Right. 
exhale left. Inhale left down. Exhale right back up. Inhale down right. Exhale left. Back, back up. Continuing on for a few more cycles. Keep the breath very even. By keeping the count always even. Keep your attention on the space between your eyebrows and feet for divine perception. you lose your concentration, be unconcerned, I'm judging. Just bring your mind back to the pranayama. Exhale out to the left side, conclude. Once you're done, just sit quietly for a few moments. Observe the states of body, the mind, and the emotions. Have no expectation as to what you should or should not see. Continue momentarily with the asanas and make this asana practice an offering again. Do it because it must be done for the well-being of all. And perhaps when you think of this as your divine duty, you stay motivated to come back to the practice each and every day. So now let's begin the practice and through the practice we, um, we just, again, through the practice, we just try to see God in all the forms and see all the beautiful and magnificent ways that God manifests in this universe through the different beings. So let's come to standing. We start off with some warm ups just to prepare the body for the practice. First one we'll do is just some um, exercises in order to um, let go of the impurities, remove the impurities in the in the organs. So we're going to start off by taking a deep breath in, exhale, bend down, hands on knees, the end completely thumb deep. Just start to pump the belly button in and out. Make the belly jump. Do as many times as you can, at least three times if you can, as you hold the breath down. Just relax the belly muscles, and the belly button will be able to move. Breath as you push the belly button into the front of the spine. See the legs trying to push your heart right to your shoulder blades, your chin right against your chest. And then release, come back up. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's get inhale. Exhale, empty out. Hands on the knees. Relax the belly button. Uh, muscles and start to push the belly button in as fast as you can. Pull up the open in again. Push the belly button against the front of the spine again. Hollow out, contract the buttocks. Make the area underneath the back is very, very thin. And release, come back up. Breathe in. 
Breathe out, relax. Now we'll continue with some exercises to move the joints in every way possible. And through these exercises, when we do the uh, exercises with, uh, and the breathing with vigor, then you get the full range of benefits. Imagine all the, uh, the, all the heat that it produces, uh, also this by resolving all the impurities. Starting off your hands on hips, make your head in circles. Try to get the ears to the shoulders, the chin to the chest, back of the head to the top. And go in the opposite direction. And now arms up. Inhale. Exhale. Bring the arms down. Inhale. Raise the arms up. Spread the fingers. Exhale, yank the arms down. And front, in front, inhale, exhale, snap the hands back to the shoulders. Now swing the arms back and forth, try to get the arms behind the ears. Now, circle the arms in the same direction that they were going. They should be going in opposite directions. Good. And now from here, arms up, inhale, exhale, throw the body down. Allow the belly to hit the thighs. Move your body stop shaking and bouncing. And then roll your way back up. Next one. Arms across the chest. Inhale. Exhale. Throw the arms back. Alternate the cross each time your arms come across the chest. incorporates a squat. So if you can't squat down all the way, just come down as far as you can. Be mindful of your knees. Raise your arms up, inhale. Exhale, drop down into squat. And back up. Take hold of the opposite elbows. Bend your knees. Make sure your feet are wide enough for balance. And we're going to throw the body from one side to the other. Kapalabhati to do it. So as you do it, as you exhale, as you go to each side, you exhale. Try to see all the way around you. And then return. Next one again, four movements with the squat. And if you want, you can jump up. If you can't jump up because your knees are uh, otherwise, you can just lift your heels. So it's like this. Inhale up, exhale down, inhale jump up, exhale down. Or you lift your heels and in place and jump. Be enthusiastic, the child. the shoulders. Inhale, circle around backwards to the front. Exhale, pull and then punch the arms right back out. And then the next one, the same movement, but the arms stacked in a down position. So you're doing a circle and a quarter. Inhale, circle around to the front. Exhale, pull in and drop the arms back down. Good. 
good. Okay, one good. Points. So, going from side to side, open up the feet a little bit more, the toes go the out to each side. Left arm up, inhale. Exhale, bend to the right, right arm up, inhale. Bend to the left. On the exhale. Continue. One same movement, but the breathing's a little bit different. Left arm up, inhale, hold the breath as you bend to the right. Exhale, come back. Right arm up, inhale, hold the breath as you go to the left. Feet a little bit further. And then come back on the exhale. Stretch the whole left side of the body as you go to the right without making wrinkles in the waist if you can. At the right side. And then come back up. Go to the left again. Continue. Don't lose yourself in the sensations. Do the practice and movements in a way that feels good to you. So that all beings feel it through you. All the movements, graceful, no jerky movements. Imagine you're grasping all your movements. Use your imagination to achieve the effect you're trying to achieve. Your imagination is a very powerful tool. You can only go as far as your imagination. So you may as well try to cultivate a balanced imagination. The more you realize for yourself, the more you can share with others. When you're starting out and you're not accustomed to moving in the morning, just go according to your, how you feel. With practice, with repetition, you eventually get acclimatized to it. And the body will learn to report you feel more efficiently. But let's do one more on each side. Stretch. here, stoking in the fire. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, round the back. Inhale, stretch the belly skin. Exhale, stretch the back skin. Inhale. Try not to jam up the lower back of the back and neck. Exhale. Inhale, and when you bring your chin into the chest on the exhale, create still a little space so you can, the breath can still pass. Inhale. Exhale. And start moving away like this and cut off the flow of the energy, the prana, or the breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So no jerky movements, no abrupt, loud movements. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Create as much space as possible. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Exhale. Two 
two more. Inhale. Exhale. And one more. Inhale. And exhale. So next one is for the hips. Raise your right leg up. Inhale and swing it up to the right. If it's too difficult to keep your legs straight, just bend your knee and make the knees a little bit smaller. Then you try to bring your head back. Now you try to get your foot right over the head. And then the other leg. Left leg up, inhale. And then swing it up to the left. And then throw it back up there. to work quite your condition. Some of these movements might look good, be too much, or and so you don't have to do as many repetitions, and you can also again slow down the movement if you need to. Next one is for the upper back muscles. Lie in the belly. And then from here, you try to join your hands together. If it's too much, you join your hands because your shoulders, you can keep your hands apart. You want to anchor down to the tops of your legs and the tops of your feet. Squeeze your heels and palms together and engage the biceps and upper back muscles as you lift your chest up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Up. Down. Up. Down. If you need to lift your legs, it makes it easier, go ahead. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and down. And relax, drop your arms, both sides of the body, breathe in. Breathe out. Relax everything. Now we're going to turn on to the right side. You can support your head with your right hand, left hand for the chest. Inhale, bring the left leg up. Exhale, back down. Push the foot away as you raise your arm, leg up. And down. Try not to make too many wrinkles in the left side of the body, the waist up. And down. Up. And down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, stretch down, up and down, up and down, but not all the way, halfway, and bring your foot up to meet it. Flex your feet, push into your left, right hip, and now extend the right arm. Left arm goes over the head in the same line. Stay running into the body and see so if you can lift your arms up off the shoulders up off the ground. Left right shoulder. Try not to try to stay in the same plane like you're being pressed into pressed between two panes of glass. And then back down. Roll on to the back for a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out all fatigue. Learn to relax instantly so you don't take it into the next pose that follow. And now let's go to the other side. I'm just going to keep the foot to the other side. Onto your left. And to the body, left hand from your head. And your right hand from your chest. Raise your right arm, right leg up. Exhale back down. Inhale up. And down. Up. Flex the foot and down. Raise the leg up. And down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and down half, not all the way again. 
just enough. Uh, bring the leg down so that the left um, foot can come and get the right foot. Flex your feet, push up through the heels, flex, and then bend the toes back. Left arm extends over the head, right arm goes over the head as well, and see if you lift your left arm up off the mat. And then again, break the pose, lie down on the back for a moment, breathe in, and breathe out. Remove all fatigue. Now sit up, and from here we're going to do kind of this backwards. Okay, so come here to child's pose. Seat back behind the heel. Inhale, come up in high cat. Round in the back. Exhale, drop the hips to your hands. Chest forward, shoulders back. Inhale, back up, high cat. Exhale, seat behind the heel. Inhale, round your back, come up. Exhale, flex your spine, arch, back into high cat, and front and lengthen your child's pose. Inhale, up, exhale, forward, chest, put your chest all the way forward so you don't clutch up the lower back. Inhale, and back, exhale. Inhale, stretch back the neck, exhale, open up the throat, try not to lose your neck. Let's get the neck out of the shoulders, inhale, back up. Exhale back. And remember, try not to form any sharp angles, any big folds at the lower back or the back of the neck. Inhale. Exhale. Coming up. Make emergence from the leg and away coming out of the ocean. Exhale, reaching its full height. And then starting to crest. And then it disappears back into the water. Inhale. Exhale, reach strong and powerful in the way. Make that step in, down. Exhale, all the way back. Up. Forward. Up. Keep coming, see your imagination. And back. Up. Forward. Now let's go from that down the shoulders, the trunk and the hips. Inhale. Inhale, rolling up. Exhale, forward. Inhale, back up. Exhale, all the way back. And then up. Forward. Back up, inhale. And all the way back. One more, inhale. And child's pose again, arms by side to the body, breathe in, breathe out, relax. Next one, we're going to move into cobra on the inhale, and then hold the breath, hold the cobra pose while you hold the breath. Glide forward, inhale. Take your chest up off the ground, we take it all the way back, hold the pose again, keep the neck long, make sure you don't lose your neck. And exhale back. If you found that entry a little bit more bit too difficult, come into baby plank on the inhale, drop the hips to your hands, chest forward, and then go back. Hold it back, hold it back. And back. You have to come back to full extension. You can take your time. Let's do the repetitions to let you reach your full height. But imagine that you're a snake deep into the grass. It's going to take a few minutes. Imagine having a balanced range of motion like the serpent. Come forward again. Plus, you those who imitate the form physically. Imagine being by the snake. And back, exhale. Lie forward again. Twice plus of those who imitate the form physically and mentally. You really are lying with the serpent. And back, exhale. Three times plus of those can imitate the form on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Tap into all the divine qualities of what you're representing. The qualities are already within you, just have to turn them on. And 
pockets, yeah. And then come forward again and pull the elbows as you're trying to pull forward towards you. This might help propel the body forward more easily now. And back. And the next steps, same movement, but when you raise your cobra, you can press into your fingertips, lift your feet, try to touch the toes at the back. Back. It doesn't matter if the toes don't touch, you just try to move different joints, joints at the same time. Imagine you're squeezing the socks behind the knees. So you're pushing your fingers to get more height. And maybe eventually the toes will meet the head. Come forward. No attachment to the belt, no expectation, just do your best. You'll eventually be able to experience everything. You'll have the opportunity. Everyone has the opportunity to experience everything. Come back. Come forward, just do your best and go as far as you can in this lifetime. And where you leave off in this life, you just pick up in the next life. You continue. Come back, exhale. Do one more, make it the best one yet. Come forward, be fierce like the cobra, fierce determination. And back. Relax. Child pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Even these moments of rest offer them up. They all, every part of the practice is important and delivers some benefit. Okay, so now we're going to come onto the belly and flip onto the back. Start off with the inhale, extend the arms over the head, reach the fingers, reach the toes. Exhale, come into the tuck. Pull the knees in towards the body. The shoulders come up and the knees if possible. And back. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, come into the tuck. Can feel the shoulders up off the mat. Try to bring your chin between the knees. Your forehead's behind the bottom knees. Inhale. Exhale, tuck. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze everything tight. All the muscles coming towards the center. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze tight. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze tight. Inhale. And tuck in. Make sure you form your fist with your body. Inhale. Same movement, but the baby's a little bit different. Hold the breath now, come into a tuck. Try to get the shoulders up to the knees. Squeeze the uh, legs from either um, inside the knees with your elbows. Bring hands one in front of the other if you need to. Maybe your forehead will come to the hands. Release, exhale. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just do your best. Inhale. Hold the breath and tuck. Either way, concentrate on the space in your eyebrows. Bring all your attention there to trust all the power there. Release, exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath and tuck. Everything stops. All the mind activity, the body moving to the motion is over the frozen. Release, and at that moment, the mind goes into complete silence. Switch. Hold the back and tuck. Make your eye a storm. All the activity going around, but the mind, the mind. Um, as a witness, remain calm and unaffected. Release, exhale. Keep the mind as a witness. Hold the back and tuck. Release, exhale, inhale, and stretch. Hold the breath and tuck when you become your eternal witness. You need to identify, take it as a sensation with the body, the mind, and the energy. Release, exhale, inhale, hold the breath and tuck. Squeeze very tight. Release, exhale. Inhale, 
then we keep the oil for toe, the fingers, pull the back and tap. Release one more time, inhale, pull the back and tap. Once again, all the intentions of space in your eyebrows. You say that when you have one of your devotion and attention there, you may trigger divine gifts. And we step. We have the interference, the ethical rules, and mark the energy of past. So keep on cultivating compassion. Keep on observing the yama and yama. So now from here, arms up over the head. If you can, throw your legs behind the head. Roll all the way back. And then you can bring your feet down. As soon as your feet come down, sit up and fold the body down over the leg. If you can't do this whole motion, then just roll on your back, back and forth. You bend your knees. And if you can't sit up without lifting your feet a little bit, that's okay. Use momentum to carry your foot bones and try and move at a constant speed. Gracefully, no jumping your feet again. If you can, keep your legs and arms straight throughout the corner. You might be able to sit up with your heels are down. Just don't hold your breath. Six. more. All the way back if you're being a cloud. And if you can come back. No big crash landing for the feet, legs or the back on the ground. Last time. And then the next time you roll back, get ready to stand. So the legs are coming down, bend your knees, plant your feet, and come right up to standing. And we'll continue with our warm or three and on the sky. So we're going to the first of that now. Hands to the heart. Keep on offering up the practice. Keep on offering up the postures. So, so you know, let's go. Raise your arms up over the head. Arch back. Hold the body down. Bend your knees, you need to bring your hands flat on the ground, and the right foot goes back, drop down to the feet. Come into the heart of Knees down, the feet all the way back. Glide forward between the arms, brush them with the ground. Come up into cobra, take your shoulders back. Back into auto mudra sarvasana. The right foot forward, that's a difficult transition. Lower the back knee, the foot doesn't make it all the way to the hand. Use your right hand to push the foot forward. And when the feet come together, reach in that hand, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right to stand and reach up over the head, arch back. Come back home. Raise your arms up. Engage the buttocks and upper back muscles. Pull the body down in half. Left foot back. Into the hard foot. Now it's time to get on the scar. Reach chest forward, head down. Or bring your feet all the way back if you can. And come forward into cobra. Shoulders back. Back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Left foot steps forward. Modify the sequence as you need to again, according to your ability. Uttanasana. Come right to stand, raise your arms over the head. Come back home. Go up and back. Don't worry about the breath. Breathe naturally into the body. The breath will follow with a little more power and ease the movements. Right foot back. Into the plank. Knees down again. One feet behind the heels and come right to one. This time, if you like, take your hips and knees up off the ground. Up for Casey Dog. Back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Right foot steps forward to the hands. Feet together, Uttanasana. Bow down, adjust your palm over. Come right to stand, you raise your arms up and back. Hands up the heart, we're going fast. You build from the feet. Reach up and back. Pull the body down, Uttanasana. Left foot back. Into the plank, down we go, and right through. Hold with the arms, push up against the side's body, lift your hips and knees away from ground if you like, up with face you down. Don't lose your neck. Back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Feet can touch your forehead to the ground. Left foot forward. Feet together, Uttanasana. Wherever you are is perfect. If you just do your best, arms up over the head, come back home. Go up and back again. 
the top bend your knees, belly on your side, push your hands, uh, bring your hands together, push them all the way up off your back. The right foot back, lower down the knee, drop your seat, raise your arms up overhead, arch back, kapyasana. Then come right back down, into the high plank, swing through, right into cobra or upward facing dog. Back into Adam Mukha Sukhanasana, love the heart in every sense. And then the right leg up, Ekapada Adho Mukha Sukhanasana, set the foot between your hands. Shoulders come over the fingertips, the foot lands softly. Drop your seat, hands up over the head, Kapiyasana, reach up your back. And then right forward again, so your hands back behind your body. Left foot comes in between the front, Uttanasana. Come right up to standing, raise your hands over the head. Come back home. Try to lose control, raise your hands up. Let's come down, bend your knees, your belly comes onto your thighs, push your body all the way back into your legs, try to get your seat over your heels, hands over your shoulders, left foot back. Drop your seats, if you can, so your hands all the way up, don't touch your feet to the ground. Practice control, and come right back down into high plank. Bring the seats back, if you want, you can try to swim through without touching your legs and hips to the ground. It's up and safe to fall. Back into Adho Mukha Sanasana. Left leg comes up and set the foot between the hands. Back knee down, drop down to the feet. Cut the ass again. Raise your hands up. Shine your inner leg. Arch your back. Go forward again. Belly on the side. Turn your hands on the back. Right foot meets the left. Uttanasana. Come all the way up to standing. Raise your hands over the head. Hands back to heart. If you hold your breath in the transitions, in those little sticky points where it's hard to move, this might help you to stay in control. Belly on your thighs, turn your hands all the way back and pull them right over your shoulders. Right foot back. Hold your breath, knee down, stay feet forward, bring arms all the way up without touching feet to the ground. Reach back as we try to get your fingers over the toes. And then come right back down. Now from here, you can move to plank. Take your seats back. You want to try to come through without touching legs and hips to the ground. Pull the elbows inside the body, push into the three toes. Into upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Sahanasana. Right leg up. Set the foot between your hands. Move your shoulders over the fingertips. Lift the legs softly. No noises, no jerky movements. Copy off me again. Lean away from the legs. Arch back. Come forward again. Hold your breath this time. Again, left foot meets the right hand. Come over the head. Uttanasana. Come right up. Arch back. Back home. Arms up again, reach up and back. Hinge of the hips, lying on your thighs, push your seat all the way up and mark your heels without you. Make sure your legs get straight. Left leg back, hold the breath. If you do this, and bring your arms all the way up and back. Lean away from the leg. Come right back down into the high plank. Entry your choice is upward facing dog. You can see if you make it all the way through without touching your legs to the ground or modify if you need to. Back into Adho Mukha Sahanasana. Left leg all the way up. Set the foot between your hands. Back knee down. Raise your arms up. Arch back. Come forward to your hands behind the back. Join together. Right foot meets the left. Uttanasana. Face against the shins if you'd like to perfectly straight. Come right up to standing. Arms over the head. Arch back. And come back up. Good. So from here. Take a deep breath in, from the heart up to the crown, send all the breath up there. Hold the breath. Imagine all the love that you sense that you bring from the heart up to the crown is going into all beings everywhere. Exhale back down to the heart, we may establish a divine unconditional love for all souls. Release the hands. Continue wrists and balance poses. So we're going to start with the left foot forward, arms out to the side or behind your back if you can. Bend your left knee, hinge at the hips, and bring the right leg up down to the T pose. The head, the, the foot at the same height, like you're lying like it's on a table. Good. Now from here, bring the left hand down in front of your left foot, turn to the right, bring the right arm up. You can get your right leg up higher. And if you have the bounce, look up at the hand above you. 
Now if you have a good balance, you can look forward towards the left hand. Make sure your left hip is over the heel. And see if you can take your left hand up off the ground, maybe in front of the heart. Bring left hand back down, right hand comes back down, and lower the right leg. Head stays heavy as you roll your way up. So let's try it on the other side now. So right foot forward, arms out to the side as an airplane or behind the back, and bend your right knee, bring your left leg up. Try to have your head and the leg at the same line. Make sure your left hip is, is um, facing down, not opening up your hip just yet. Stay strong in the pose. Bring the right to the dip, come down in front of your foot. You can use a block if you need to. You can even do this on your right knee. Do it again according to your condition. Wherever you are is perfect of your authentic pose. Left leg comes up, and if you can, left hand comes up as well. Eventually, you look up at the hand above you. And if you want, make sure your right hip is over the heel. Look towards your front hand, hold the breath. See so if you can get your right hand in front of the heart. down, left hand, and then left foot comes down. Roll your way up. Charge the body from everywhere. Charge everything you need into the spine and up to the crown, through the spine. Exhale, send it everywhere throughout the body. Good. And next one, let's do ballet pose. Standing on the left foot, anchor down to the left foot. Bring the right foot up. Try to take hold of the heel from the inside to come behind you. Arm and leg come up at the same time. So depending on your flexibility, you might be able to hug the shoulders. If you're more flexible, maybe the foot comes up higher. Flex the foot. Try to have your arm and the leg at the same angle. Be magnificent and poised like a dancer. Embody all the qualities of a dancer. You become a magnificent one. Now, we're going to try to see if you foot, but try not to drop your foot. So, when you learn to do this, oops, I lost it. <laughs> so, you try, if you let go of the foot, you have, before you let go of the foot, you engage the leg muscles and the core. So, let go of it slowly, and then the foot will stay up. And then lean to your left, bring the leg down, and from here, gliding eagle. Bend your knee. So you can get your belly on your thigh. Raise your right leg up as high as you can. Hold the head, the head above the height of the knee. If you want, you can join your hands even together. Top and tree. Open up the palms, bring your hands all the way up over your shoulders. And fall towards your toes a little bit, your left toes. And then release. Push into your left foot and come back up. Try on the other side now. Whatever happens, remain unconcerned, undisturbed. Just do your best. And be again like the eternal witness, watching everything without judgment, without expectation. Take hold of the left heel, thumb behind the heel, and bring your arm and leg up. If you can, you can look up, flex the foot. You'll be able to maybe balance a little bit better. Lift up out of the hips. Make sure you're not dropping into your hips. Stay tall and grand. Ready to let go of the foot, so engage the leg muscles again. Oops, I'm losing it today. So whatever happens, just dance with it. So let go of the foot slowly. And then lean to the right as your leg comes down. Right into gliding eagle. Bend your right knee. Your belly lands on the thigh, the right left leg comes up higher. Arch your back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Head comes forward a little bit, your chin comes up. Or again, if you want, interlace your fingers. Pull hands all the way up over your shoulders. See so you can get your left leg up even higher. Arch the back. And hold the breath as you come back up. Turn the palm 
comes forward, inhale, drops everything you need. Bring it up into the spine, all the way to the crown. Exhale, send it everywhere throughout the body, send it out to all beings. Good. You're always being affected by the gunas, these are the shapes, the qualities um, of the universe that just con are constant in constant flux. Try to remain undisturbed by them. Good. So now next, actually we're going to get a little bit out here, and we're going to go to the left. So bring your fingertips up along to the sides of the shoulders, like unwind your elbows, jump and walk or walk your feet apart. Turn to your left. As you turn to your left, slide your right foot back. Try to get a little bit deeper into the pose, depending on your hips. Maybe your back knee is just a few inches away from the ground. Perhaps the left knee is over the toes. Again, go according to your abilities. Make sure your back arm is not dropping down. Keep your back arm strong. Now lower the back knee down, right into Kapyasana. Hands together if you can, walk your shoulders back, push your seats all the way forward. Lift your chest, get the feeling to the downward facing dog here. Um, your arms behind the ears. Arch your back, make sure you don't bend your elbows. Think of the crescent moon shape still. There's no kinks or discomfort in this long curve. Stretch, and that's when you finish going on the back toes. Now from here, bring your hands to the inside, the front foot, left foot, move the left foot out. Pick up the back knee and smooch back and forth. Push on through to your toes. Try to get your hips in sync. Push back one more time to the right heel. Lower the knee down if your hips are rolling up. You can fall onto your right forearm, your right hip, and roll back to your mat. You make sure you want to make sure that the knees not dropping away from the body. So not like this, and nor like this. The foot's sliding away from you. Keep your shin vertical. This is why you move the foot out a little bit so that you give yourself a little bit more room for the body to come down beside your leg. Eventually, you want to try to get your back lower than your knee. Keep telescoping your bottom, your head and chest forward. When your hips are anchored down, the rest of the body may fall more easily. The pelvis, the belly, then eventually the chest. If you're not low enough to your hips, stay in your hands, but keep pushing your hips down like you do in Cobra. And keep lengthening, the more you lengthen, the more the body will come down. Now we're going to come back up, press into your hands, slide your left hip back. Adahanyamasana, so your hip is over the back knee, your right foot can come to the left a little bit, pick the toes up on the front foot, and bow to your leg, try to get your belly on your thigh, imagine trying to get your belt, your chest beyond your knee. You really bring your attention is where the prana will go, so bring your, air, your attention to all those areas that feel tight, perhaps in the pancreas in this case. If you're very flexible, you can hinge your seat forward, bend the toes under the back foot, move the right foot back and hand your knee, and slide your left heel forward. So you can bounce a little bit, try to get your hips come down, don't do it again too aggressively. Move slowly and mindfully. You can go all the way down, then go ahead. Move down to the feet, and you can bring your hands overhead if you like. Hands across the wrists, and this is representative of the leap that Hanuman took to rescue his his master's wife. It's as much of a physical a, bit, a leap of faith as a physical leap. Anything is possible. Let the pose. Press into your fingertips. Slide your left foot back, all the way back, so that the lands underneath your knee. You come up. Your legs are like a box. Bend your toes under the back foot. Turn this way again. Paddy Preet to Pashapanasana, right arm up, angle the toe knee towards the right, push it out of the way with the right, left hand so you get your arm all the way across. Try to get your armpit on the outside of the left, the left knee, left hand pushes into your right. Push down so that the belly comes up. You want to have the belly over the thigh so you have more room to spin and then keep turning the facing chest up to your left. If 
you have other variations going there, if you try to take out the upper ground, you can also take a bind. You can use your left hand to guide the arm underneath the leg, go at diagonal. So the hand comes in front of your belly, left hand then goes over your back, and you join the hands. Lift the back knee up if you can. Bend the toes under, push up through the heel, and keep the back leg strong by pushing the back knee up. Pull the arms, try to get a little bit deeper into the twist. Break the pose, coming back, and bring your body back in between your legs. Come all the way up. Okay, if you can't see, bring go to the right, you can't see your screen, just turn around 180 degrees. Into Vita Padrasana again. Nice and strong with the warrior, look over the front hand. Always steady, always letting it through. down, you can just sit all the way down, Kapiyasana, if you need to modify, you can just bring hands underneath, push into your knee, and bring them back, or hands on the seat. Again, do the pose, the variation, that's, or the modification that suits you. Off of the back as best you can. Here, break the pose, get ready for your lizard. Hands on the inside of the right foot, move the right foot over the edge of the mat, and then glide back and forth a few times just so your hips can come down. Imagine your hips are made of lead, very, very heavy. Push back your left foot one more time, lower the knee down. If your hips are getting low enough, fall onto your left one. If not, then just stay here and just keep working the pose. Keep on pulling out of your head and chest forward. Reach forward with the head and uh, with the crown of the head. Maybe your body will eventually go lower than that you do. And then if you're flexible, then maybe you lift that leg down and come all the way down. Pelvis, the belly, and the chest, and the chin. Fix your gaze at the lizard. Try to imitate on all levels you'll remember. And then you learn to perform. And that's when you find your golden sigma and twist in the pose. Learn to move the divine within the form. Come back on the hands. Avatananatna. If you like, bring your left foot to the right a little bit. Pick up the toes and the right foot. And then bow to the head. Your cheek is on the inside of the right shin. Your chest is trying to move beyond the knee. Just to a humbleness here. All the movements, all the postures have a certain consciousness to try to tap into it. The eyes downcast, the head low, the gesture of surrender and humility. Again, if you like, you can move your left foot back in line with your knee. Start to slide to the floor, bring your hips forward, and then walk your hands back alongside your hips. So you want to stay more upright, shoulders over the hips and just pulse a little bit gently again not too hard eventually push into the right heel and left heel at the same time try not to have right hip and center left try to keep them in line with one another if you're all the way down you can take a little stretch in the back lift the body up out of the hips embody the courage the faith and the devotion of Hanuman Fingertips, drive the right foot back. How do you fix the Pashtanasana? Legs again like a box. The left heel line to the left, the, the, the right heel line to the right, back of the knee, left arm up. And you would tell me towards the left so you can get your arm down a little bit more easily. Right hand pushing to your left, back the shoulder, left shoulder pushing to the outside knee. And when you push the right hand to the left, as you push down, your body comes up, try to get the center of your chest behind your thumbs. Roll the right shoulder back all the way. You can stay here, you can take a variation as you see fit. Go ahead to the bind if you can. 
sometimes residents who are doing different entries maybe look in the left first. You have more space for the left arm to go underneath the right leg. And that leg can go over the back and join that side. And then pull on the arms. If you have the binds, again, you will see critical twist. Turn the chest and face all the way up. dropping into your seat, uh, your seats down, or dropping to your shoulders. Going to Vasisthasana, left hand moves to the right a little bit, and go to your side plank. If again you're too much for your wrist, or um, you, if um, your hips are starting to sag, just lower your left knee down to your knee here. If you're stronger, you can see some legs are going to go up. You can see other ones of the foot. Back in the plank, go to the other side. Make sure that you have a nice straight line from hand to hand. Make sure it does not have any deep fingers even active. Things together, and you can stay here. You can drop onto your right knee if it's too much, or you can even raise your left leg up. Come back to the side, uh, side plank, and then through into plank, in the seat back. Jump to the hands. Come to squat, not squat, but a chair pose, shoulders back, lift the heels all the way up as high as you can. Flex your feet. Or your thighs might start to shake. Be unconcerned. Try to stay calm. Roll the heels, uh, the seat down. From here, bring your hands. Down in front of your feet, land your heels down, walk your feet out a little bit more if you need to. Come into a squat. Push the back of the arms into the inner sides and vice versa. Again, ready for Katasana or Bakasana. So bring your hands down, lift your heels, and try to get your, when you lift your heels, your shoulders come over your face just a little bit more straight in your arms. And from here, you pick up your toes. Bend your arms again, your head comes forward. Try to keep your head up a little bit. Otherwise, you might do a nice move down into the ground. If you have more abilities, you can keep your arms straight. Knees come into your armpits. Come forward, your arms stay straight for this one. And when you pick up your feet, you bring your heels towards your seat and then your, only your knees are in contact with your armpits. Or back to your armpits. You can do that one or again stay with the crow pose. You can even just keep your feet on the ground. Just concentrate and gain more weight onto your arms. Bend your arms a little bit, bring your head forward. Those who are kakasana or bakasana easily can maybe, if you like, bring your forehead down on the ground. Come into the teddy bear. Your knees, your shins on the backs of the arms. Maybe even bring your legs all the way up into headstand if you like. You can't get your legs straight up, lift your legs one leg in front of the other. This is the easier way to balance. If that was too much, you can do head pose. So bring your knees down. If your headstand stay there for a bit. If you're doing hair pose, if you prefer to do hair pose with forehead in front of your knee, lift your seat up as high as you can so that your knees come over the shoulders, the knee, your, your hips come over the knees. You're pressing your upper back forward and then you look at the wall. If there's too much pressure in the back of the neck, just move your head forward a little bit. Any expression of an inversion you like, this one or teddy bear again, if you want, lift your seats. You want to be close to your wrists. You want to have your seat. You have to move your feet closer to get your seat over your shoulders. And then it makes it easier to take your your the position. Just land underneath your knees against your elbows and pull your toes away from the ground. Keep pushing your hands as much as your feet will come. Now 
Now wherever you're at, start to make your way down with control. If you can headstand, hinge at the hips, come back. You can even, if you come from headstand, you can even come back into your crow pose. Land your legs on the backs of the arms, upper arms, flex your feet, hold the breath, so you can pick up your head. And then come back down. Oops. From here, we roll right back into plow pose. So get your seat down on you. Go all the way back. Your hands on your back, your feet over your shoulders. If your feet don't touch down, keep your hands on the back. Make the choice of having your legs extended and straight. Your feet touch down, you can put your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers, push your edges to your other edges, hands down. You want to go again. Where you can bring your knees against your butt, your thighs against your body, and use your knees to hold the height. When you're flexible, move your knees at home right down to the ground behind you and turn your shoulders. Go with him beyond the body, the mind, and emotions. Meditate in the pose. Concentrate on the space in your eyebrows. Make your one, make your mind again one pointed. Now we're getting ready to come into the counter pose. Fish. Bring your hands behind the back. Palms down. Press into your arms so we can. So Descent, descent is controlled, no big crash landings. Keeping your legs down, stop when you're halfway down. If you're sitting on your wrist at this point, if not, just move your hands underneath your seat and then lift your back up off the ground. Pull the elbows in tighter towards the middle. Lift the chest as much as you can. Try to get the top head on the ground. If you do not keep your legs up, bring your legs down totally at this point onto the ground. Now keep lifting your chest, move your head a little bit closer into the seat if you can, and uh, towards the seat, and then be very fast and move into sleepy doll. Bring your legs down and relax. Break the pose. Breathe in and breathe out. Relax. From here. Slide your left foot in, bring the right leg up, take hold the ankle, and bring the right knee onto the shoulder. Pull on the right, try to get your leg closer to your head. If you can, you can extend your left leg down flat on the ground. If you're very flexible, you might be able to get your foot to the ground beside your head. You move your leg out to the right a little bit, and if you might be able to take your, your knee kind of right into the armpit more or less, make sure your left side of the body doesn't stay anchored down. Push the left side of the seat down. Now keep holding your ankle. Make sure, like if you're out to the side a little bit, bring your leg back in front. Lift your body up. Try to get your shin to the, your forehead to the shin. And back down. Release the leg. And then breathe in, breathe out. Slide your right foot in. If you're flexible, you and you can do it without uh, bringing your left right foot in, and that's okay. Keep it extended on the ground. Try to bring your left knee right to the shoulder. You have to bend your left leg. Take hold the ankle and keep pulling on the foot. Try to get your leg, your foot closer to the head. Keep the leg straight. Roll the left hip down. Make sure the left side of the hip is not riding in. Up. Again, if you're flexible, you might be able to take your leg all the way. Uh, keep your leg straight and bring your foot all the way to the ground. Move according to your abilities, your flexibility. Be careful you don't overstretch. Be mindful of the condition of your hands. Depending where your leg is, move it back in front of your body, pull the foot closer in, and then lift your back up off your shoulders up off the ground. Try to get your forehead to your shin.
bring your head back down from here. Bring your weight to the feet, relax. Push into your arms, the arms beside the body. To the earth, you can send your feet all the way back behind the head and flat pose again. Now, depending on where you're at, you can take all the big toes, you can take all the ankles or the back knees, come up into the last one pose. If you can, bending your knees, hold your breath and come up. Try not to allow your feet to drop down to the ground in between. Good. Now, depending on where you're, what, uh, which variation, you can keep your legs level, your shins level with the ground, you can keep your legs straight, arms go beside your legs. Fast. Uh, let's take a breath now. Breathe very fast in here. Bring your feet down. Right into press. Raise your left arm up, right arm behind the back. Push to the right. Push to the right, the left arm again to the outside of the right side. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. And then turn to the right. And hold the right shoulder. Keep your knees together. Keep pushing against the outside of the right knee with the back with the with the elbow. Keep the back straight. Don't lean back. The hands should be close to your back. Okay, against the back. And then move to the other side. Right arm up. Go to your left. Push against the outside of the left thigh. Inhale, lift the chest, push the lower back up and in, turn more to your left. Take your pose, lie down on your back. Make your way down gently. Allow the hands to go beyond the edge of the mat, the feet to fall outwards and rest here. Let's take a deep breath in. Exhale, imagine you fainted. Imagine you went unconscious. All the muscles just instantly relax. Feel like all the muscles all melted, dissolved. The best is arriving now. Be receptive to all the incoming gifts, the fruits of the practice. Imagine you're coming from all around you. And all beings do the same thing as you are, offering themselves up for practice, for service. Be grateful to all beings for all that they share with you. Even just your actions and words, even if they don't do it directly to you, you have something gained from each and every being, from your interactions with each and every being, from each and every experience. Knowledge is what brings us relief from pain and suffering. Knowledge moves us to be the true self which is beyond the body, the mind, and the emotions, not affected by time, not affected by death. This is your nature too. Eternal, stainless, immutable. This doesn't stop when we leave the mat. It continues in our day-to-day -day lives, in all our interactions. Continue to see the divine in each and every being. Imagine you're face to face with God. And in doing so, you may be more inclined to treat them with respect and reverence and love. You won't have any desire to bring harm to them or to take away their comfort. Now that intention firmly ingrained in heart and mind. 
will continue to anchor in our mind and heart and continue to live by it in our day-to-day -day lives. Prepare to come back to seated position. Do so in a way that is gentle, slow, and reverent so that you don't break the tranquility that we created through the practice. Close now with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Instill the peace of things and with all beings everywhere. Oh, Shanti Shanti Shanti. Be receptive to the grace of God. All is within. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. If you need more Shavasana, I encourage you to continue to do a little bit more in order to allow the benefits to really integrate. Until the next time, much love. Thank you so much again for coming.